Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Well, I got a viewer letter um, early last week about um, emission regulations. And I thought, well, that's an interesting topic. I'll cover that sometime. And then on Friday, the EPA brought the topic up to a boiling point, and I've got to cover it today. And we're going to talk about all of that. It looks like the EPA is moving toward loosening the regulations that brought us to Tier 4 engines. And there's a whole can of worms that that opens up, and we'll talk about that today. Let's get to my letter first. Letter comes from Sam, and Sam says, Curious as to what the future looks like on tractor engine emissions, since we are having a serious change of politics with the Trump administration. Now, what happened after I got the letter from Sam was EPA Administrator Lee Zeldin was in Indianapolis at a news conference, and he made an announcement that rocked the engine world and the pickup truck world and the big truck world, tractor world, everybody. It caught their notice. And it basically sounds like we're rolling back all the pollution regulations that brought us to Tier 4 engines. Let's watch. As it relates to greenhouse gas emission standards on light duty, medium duty, and heavy duty, it doesn't reset anything. It eliminates everything. This proposed rule uh, is a proposal to eliminate the endangerment finding, to eliminate greenhouse gas standards, all the regulations that came out, including the electric vehicle mandates, all of the greenhouse gas standards. Well, let's talk about what we know so far, and that's not much. We probably don't know more than we know at this point. What we do know is by law, there'll be a 45 day comment period on this proposal and environmental groups are gonna fight it tooth and nail, and there's gonna be some lawsuits filed. And so short term, I don't think you'll see anything change. Long term, well, it's more of a can of worms. So let's talk about the diesel engine tier standards that have come into play in the United States and the world. And we'll talk about that as well because it all kind of interrelates together. Here's a chart that the Association of Equipment Manufacturers provided that shows the tiers of diesel engine development and diesel engine offerings. And what basically happened was the EPA under the Clean Air Act and, and the Greenhouse Gas Endangerment Act that uh, Mr. Zeldin talked about, dictated that we have cleaner exhaust emitting from the exhaust pipes of tractors and over the road trucks. And this is how it was phased in. Tier one started in 1996. Tier two was 2001 to 2003, gradually phased in. Tier three was 2005 and 2006. Now in tier one through three, there weren't big changes in the way we operated our equipment. Tier four, there was a big change. Tier four started in 2011 and tier four final was 2014. If you buy a tractor today or an over the road truck or a pickup or any diesel engine powered device that goes on the road or off road, with, with very few exceptions, it has a tier four engine in it. When the tier four standards came into being, there's really variations of these, but about three ways of dealing with the uh, pollutants that come from diesel combustion. Number one, you can accumulate them in what's called a DPF or a diesel particulate filter, and then burn them out. Another system uses a kind of a lack of a better term, a catalytic converter for diesel engines. And a third method adds a fluid to the combustion process called DEF, which is mostly urea, that burns the pollutants out of the system. And that system is what we've gone to on the big tractors, on big trucks, and on a lot of our pickups. There's a few quirks with those. If you're putting DEF fluid in, you're having to buy it. It's an extra thing to pay for. If you're burning it out, what, how that works is there's a, a really, really hot fire built under the hood of your tractor to burn the diesel particulate matter out. If you're running at PTO rated engine speed through the field, you probably don't even know what's going on. But if you're putzing around the yard, or if you're idling, or if you're parked in a barn, it creates some issues. It's such a hot fire, if there's combustible material nearby, 
it can burn your barn down. So that's a problem. And uh, that's why a lot of people really hate the DPF filters. The other thing is they can, all these systems have additional components and they can fail and they're expensive to replace. So that's by and large why people hate them. That and the fact that whenever they came out and became requirements for all tractors, they added about 10% to the cost of a tractor, regardless of the brand or the system. Now, one other thing I want to address at this time is sulfur. Uh, that's uh, something that was legislated out of diesel fuel a few years ago. And if you burn sulfur, it it's creates some fairly toxic emissions. It's what causes acid rain. It causes a lot of health issues with people that are asthmatic or have, have breathing issues. And we got rid of sulfur a few years ago. Now, I, I think that most people are on board with sulfur being out of diesel fuel. But there is a problem without sulfur. Sulfur is a lubricant, and having sulfur going through the injection system of a diesel engine added lubricity to the system. And so the, removing the sulfur meant a more sophisticated injection system with tighter tolerances. And we see more pump jobs now, more failures in the injection system than we did before when sulfur was a part of the system. Now you can put uh, additives in to lubricate that that don't pollute but uh, sulfur went out a few years ago and here's a graph that shows what what happened with removing sulfur from diesel it's it's not in our air anymore and in my mind that's a good thing and here's another graph that shows all of the different particulate matter that can come from a diesel combustion process and how those have dropped now, at this point, I think it's kind of important to look at where the rest of the world is in terms of dealing with diesel emissions. Um, when we started in the U.S. with our standards, Canada was in there with us, and Europe was pretty much in there with us, and Japan was. And as we developed these standards, everybody kind of went on the same path. We're at Tier 4. Europe is actually on Tier 5. They're one step beyond where we are in terms of controlling emissions. Uh, Japan and South Korea are where we are, basically. They've got different names for the, the tiers. I think they call them stages. But they're, they're, they've taken basically kind of the same actions to deal with diesel emissions. And that's important to know. A lot of other countries that are not in the developed world might have gotten to tier one and stopped. Some countries got to tier three, couldn't get to tier four because they've got no way of distributing the DEF fluid. So it's kind of all over the board where people are. Some, some countries did nothing. So every country has got their own standards. There's not a set global standard for diesel particulate emissions. And that's important. And this kind of leaves the engine manufacturers and the tractor manufacturers and pickup truck and big truck manufacturers in, in a really tough place. What I know about the manufacturing process is if you can build one product and build it the same and spread your cost over a lot of units, that's how you make money. And the engine manufacturers are generally global in scope. They sell engines all over the world. We've seen there become fewer engine manufacturers. Some of the engine manufacturers, when we got to this tier system, said, we're done. We know it's gonna cost a lot of money to tool up to develop these new engines and we're just getting out. And the engine manufacturers that are left are trying to sell engines on a global market. Uh, and there's some strange bedfellows in that. Just a side note, there's a John Deere tractor with a Fiat engine in it. Google it, you'll see it. And uh, what it is, is a Fiat, it's their FT4 engine, great engine, nothing wrong with it. It's just not made by Deere. And Deere had a specialty tractor that they needed a certain spec of engine in and they couldn't gear up to build a tier four version themselves. So they bought it from Fiat. So in the engine world, you see strange bedfellows with people trying to get a volume of engines sold. And herein lies the problem. So right now the engine manufacturers are making one engine for Europe. They're making one engine for the US and Canada and Japan and South Korea, another engine for Brazil, another engine. It goes on and on. And what they would like to do is for the world society as a whole to agree on what pollution standards do we want and then let them make that engine for everybody. Now, this is a politically charged issue, I get that. 
if you're on the left, you feel like I would rather err on caution and have good air for my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids to breathe. And it's worth whatever it costs because we can afford it. If you're on the right, you're like, yeah, I'm in favor of clean air, but we've gone too far. Some of the statements I've read about where the exhaust is coming out of our diesel engines right now show that if you breathe that air coming out of the exhaust, it would be cleaner than what is normally in some of our bigger cities. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. That's what a lot of folks that are against these regulations say, but it's possible because we have really, really clean exhaust emissions. We've gotten to a point, we've gone about as far as we can with the technology we have now on removing pollutants. And bear in mind, it's a complicated issue. There are lots of pollutants formed when the diesel combustion process happens. And we've eliminated or, or greatly reduced a lot of them. And it, where we go from here, there are some nitrous based, uh, like oxides of nitrogen that some people feel like we need to get more of them out of our air, but the technology doesn't exist to do that. So here we are with folks on the left saying, we need to take it to another level. Let's err on the, on the end of caution. And the folks on the right going, you're nickel and diamond me to death. My maintenance costs are horrible. It's bankrupting me. And you've gone overboard with the regulations. It's too bad that we've got politicians involved in this and scientists that don't agree and the world market to look at. And we can't come to an agreement on what is reasonable and what is makes sense to protect the environment for future generations and still let us all make a living. That's what it really boils down to. And the engine manufacturers are caught in this area where they would love to have one set of standards for the entire world and they build one family of engines for everybody. Now, what is gonna come out of this? Well, there's gonna be a lot of yelling and screaming from both sides in this comment period and then there's gonna be lawsuits and there's probably gonna be delays. The farm world is in love with this idea of rolling back these standards. I'm not sure the engine manufacturers and the tractor manufacturers or pickup truck or big truck manufacturers are. And here's why. You know, we've had several years of tier four inventory put out in the field. We've got inventory on the ground of tier four. And if we go back to tier three or tier one or nothing, they've got to retool and build inventory to meet the new demand. And so all of the inventory that's in the field because I think there's a lot of people that would love to have less pollution stuff on their vehicles, that's gonna to have to be discounted heavily in order to sell. All of the used inventory that's out there that's being used right now with tier four engines is gonna drop in value. I mean, probably pretty sharply. And so you've got all of this years of inventory and what's in dealer and manufacturers inventory right now, all of this stuff that has to be worked through and a delay for the new engines coming. And couple that with the fact that if you get a new administration in Washington, DC, which is a possibility, they could go right back to tier four again. And so as long as it's such a politically charged uh, topic and there's no consensus on what is right and reasonable everybody is caught in a lurch. And if I were guessing, I would say the tractor manufacturers and the engine manufacturers are gonna try for the next few months and couple of years to keep their head down and pray this situation just kind of dissolves and goes away and they don't have to change because it's gonna cost money to gear up and go back to producing the old engines and they're gonna to have to discount the inventory that's in the field in order to do that. So it really opens up a big can of worms for the manufacturers of tractors and engines. I wish we could all come together on what is a reasonable amount of diesel emission and, and figure out what we need to do to get to that point and just do that globally. And then we all breathe clean air and we all have a level playing field to play on and uh, we all have the same engine. I don't think that's gonna happen. I appreciate you watching my videos. I would be honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and you could do that by clicking the mic face icon and check the bell so you get notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with cool things for sale for the tractor owner that helps support my channel 
And here's another couple of videos you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.